Welcome to note set number one of EECE 301 and uh, in this note set we'll find out a little bit about what this course is all about. So not all EEs and COEs, COEs being computer engineers, um, design circuits. A um, large number of those kinds of engineers have to figure out um, what are the circuits going to do? What are the mathematical algorithms or the mathematical uh, basis for what a circuit is going to do? Uh, and sometimes how that's going to be implemented, uh, you know, the math about uh, behind what's going to be implemented in uh, software or some other computing device. And when we have a whole system of circuits, uh, we need someone sitting up above that whole system of circuits and subsystems to tell us how this is all going to work together. So lots of EEs and COEs don't do any circuit design. Uh, we design the systems and the algorithms that um, process information uh, and all of this relies very heavily on mathematics and mathematical models for how the real world works and how information is described and processed. So um, the idea is that systems are some set of hardware and or software uh, with some information flowing into them and that's what we study in this course called signals and systems. So just briefly, a signal is just a time varying voltage um, or some other quantity. It doesn't even have to be an electrical quantity. It could be like a pressure um, or uh, something like a you know, monetary quantity for that matter. Uh, but it's something that varies with time and it carries some information. And the job of the system uh, could be many different things. We could wish to extract the information from the signal, modify that signal to contain some other type of information, uh, transform it into something entirely different, or start with a signal and manipulate it so that um, it now carries more information than it did before, or um, we've imparted some information upon that signal. Um, so we use math models um, to describe what the system does and we use math models to describe how the information is in the signal, how to characterize the signal. So some um, to put some uh, concreteness to this, we might have a, a system which is an audio amplifier uh, that takes the input of an iPod. Now the iPod itself is a system uh, and for that matter this this thing over here uh, let me get my pen going here. I should have gotten that going earlier. That thing there is a speaker, um, and so the speaker itself could be viewed as a system. Uh, but the iPod we can think of as uh, creating some input voltage. The audio amplifier is going to create some output voltage, and that audio amplifier might change the amount of bass or treble or mid range, um, you know, some sort of tone control. And we can think of that as modifying the signal that goes through. Um, not really a, a information per se, um, but we can think of it that way. Now that's the physical system. Uh, we like to abstract that and think about the system model and so we'll talk about a just a box uh, with a single line going in and a single line going out. Um, even though we've gone from the double line ideas over here to represent that represent a voltage across two terminals, over here we're just simply saying the signal goes into the system abstractly and we think of the input as some sort of math function. Uh, we have a math model for the system itself and the output is also thought of as some sort of um, math function. And our goal is to understand how all these math models for systems and signals interact. Uh, and ideally we'd like to be able to say suppose we have a math function or a math model for x of t and we have some math model for our system. How does the output um, come out? What, what, does, what can we say about how the output behaves? Uh, this is a, showing a broad range of application areas. I'm not going to go through them all, but you'll, you can look down this list and um, see that you know, virtually everything that you deal with on, in your everyday life um, 
uh, is pretty much covered uh, by the signals and systems. So just to zoom in on one of these, um, you know, for example, uh, cell phones. Before we can build a cell phone uh, to allow you to communicate, we have to know mathematically what is it that describes how that cell phone is going to work. How are we going to take that voice and convert it into a signal, which we can then uh, somehow transmit over the airwaves um, to another receiver somewhere, a base station, uh, and then uh, recover that information. So how how does does that happen? Uh, yes, there's circuitry involved in that eventually, but um, uh, we can't just start building the circuitry until we know uh, a little better what we're supposed to be doing. So here's five common scenarios that will um, underlie our intentions in this course. So you might be given a system and you want to try to determine some signal that will pass through it um, well. Um, it, will, it won't be changed much as it goes through that, that, some, that system. Uh, so um, you know, that's the case when we're trying to determine a communication transmitter. We want that transmitted signal to pass through the air and get to the receiver well. So we want to make sure we know how to do that. Uh, we might be given a type of signal, say an audio signal, and then we want to design an audio amplifier that will boost that to higher levels but won't really color the tone of it. Um, so it passes it through untouched. Another idea is to design a system that will change the signal. So an audio equalizer or tone control would, would do that. Uh, another idea is to extract information from some expected type of signal. So a radar system, we send a, a signal out, it comes back, and there's information embedded in that signal that we wish to extract. Now we might also be designing a system and some signal. Uh, that um, gives a desired output. So like cruise control on a car, um, we've got the system here, uh, we call it the forward system, which is the car, um, and then there's certain external forces that would be, uh, you know, what's happening on the road, um, wind and so forth, um, uh, and then uh, we measure the speed of the car and we feed back that information as another input through possibly some other feedback system. Uh, and then uh, that creates a control force that will counteract those external forces. And the goal is to keep the speed as constant as possible. So um, as we go through this course, we'll be making a distinction between continuous time and discrete time. Uh, so continuous time is like what you were looking at in your circuits class. Uh, you've got signals that are wiggling uh, versus time uh, as a uh, continuum. Uh, and um, so the idea is we get a continuous signal from the sensor, from some sensor, a microphone or something like that. It goes through some continuous time system, some analog electronics, uh, to, to at least pre-modify the signal. Then we go through an A to D converter where we convert from a signal that's on a continuum to a signal that is just discrete elements, discrete points, just a series or stream of numbers. Uh, and then we go through a discrete time system, which is really just some sort of computing device. Um, and we do our processing of that signal there. And then sometimes, not always, uh, we go back through a, a DAC, a digital to analog converter, um, to come back out um, and create some continuous time electrical signal. Um, OK, so that kind of gives you a very breezy introduction to what Signals and Systems is. And as we go through this course, um, we'll be touching on the mathematics that um, underlies all of this. So by the time you finish this course, you should understand how to mathematically describe um, this entire progression. Thanks.